This is Die Sporting Network. What, what, what. Welcome you back here to the University of Maryland at Trinity Center. We got the 2A final. The Patterson Clippers. Wakonico Indians, both teams. Record of 24 and 3. Comico trying to get their first championship. And then prevailing through the 2A playoffs, beating Fowlers last year, Oakdale, to get to this game today. Back over, no good. Price with it. Now for Patterson. They're in their road dark uniforms. Pull up jump. Got it. Marvin Price starts it off. Two nothing game to the Indians. Turned it over. Back comes Patterson inside a reversal. Drops in for Wills. Wills transferring from Jumper Towers and been in the Mets. Key for Patterson this year. That hits for Stevens. There's Jalen Baker. Back up the court. And one to finish. Jason Handy shooting the and one. And Wakamako with a one point lead. Thomas back over to Mungo. Price. Swings it back. Tries. Kicks it. Mongo fakes it. Reforso! Drops him! 6-5 game. Early for Patterson. That was a wild pass. Almost picked up. Blocked by Price. Back comes Wells. Blocked the other way. By Lowe. Jump oh, in there! How about that three? Marshall ties it at eight. Low tried to get it, no good. Back over to Mongo. One on one, got it. 10 8 game. Back comes Patterson. Mongo. Price swings it back. That's a three. Hits off the back on high. Wills fights for the rebound. Another chance. He pulls back out. Long distance pass. Wide open three. Hits it. <laughs> Mr. Blackwell gives Patterson a five point lead at 13 to 8. Welcome you back here to the University. Pull up jump. No good. Smashed it back. Got it in there! Price snatches the rebound down. Back over to Ty Thomas. Wills putting his will in the basket there. 15 to 10. Seconds left, shot clock is off. Comico can cut it to one with a three. Three ball. Hits it! One point game. As the first quarter draws nine to a close. Reverso missed it. Shot will not be off. After one, a tight one here in the 2A championship game. Patterson's up by one. Second quarter. Underway. Comico cutting the lead to one with the three, make for the end of the first quarter. That's a pull-up jumper. That hits. Indians back up by one. Stick. Wow. Price. Thomas to Wills. Price for three. Hits it. 
18-16 game. Try to put it up and does inside. Mr. Baker. Bakes it two in and it was tied at 18. Marvin Price leads all scores with seven right now. Price fakes again, pulls up. First one was sweet, the second one just as nice. Mungo. Price for three. Hits it again. Now Marvin Price. Double figures at 12. 23-18. Turns it over. Swings it. Price, why not? Hits again. Marvin Price stocks a three again. Eight point lead for Patterson. And a timeout by Wakamako. Tipped and miss. Price with it. Swings it over. Thomas, back over to Price, elevates and hits. Thirty twenty. Three forty nine left in the half. Almost picked off. Low gets the back door and it opens up for him. Thomas the floater, bumped high, offensive rebound, and side it goes in. Pick City, Price, coast to coast, lays it in. This dip in there. That's the Six, five, four, three, two, one. No good. And that's going to be the half. That's the end of the first half. So at halftime, Patterson up 12. 38. 26. Second half of this MPSSA 3A final coming up. Rebound to Mungo, swings it up to Thomas. Thomas, all the way, lays it in off the glass. Price, missed it, offensive rebound goes in for Jones. Mungo with it back, brings it out for Patterson. Pull up jumper. No good. Offensive rebound to Price. Swings it over to Thomas. Pull up. Hits it. Four points. Counted at one. And it's a 12 point game here. If Kyle Cole can hit a bucket here, they really be back within striking distance. Three ball. No good. Low. How did it run? Time out by Patterson. Already five team fouls on the Clippers. See what happens here. Nine point game now.
Three ball from Thomas Henson. Pull up and hits. Dawn Stevens. Evenly scored for Wakamako with Lowe leading and scoring for them with 10. The first up by Mongo rolls in. Bat it. Almost turned over. Stevens got it back and lays it in. Just behind the back, blocked by Price. Offensive rebound, spins in. Mungo, back to Thomas. Wide open inside. Back home on the foul is called as well. The senior in his final act at Patterson. Got 11 now. He scored nine and a quarter. He's trying to get number 10 right here in the line. Got it in there. Addison. Three ball. Tip the miss. Offensive rebound. Spins in at the buzzer. The basket will count. After three, Patterson, 56, 43, a 13 point lead, fourth quarter, coming up, yeah. that's Kennedy Center, Thomas Paul. Returning for White Collins, Jason Henry, replacing Matt Love. Drops it, Price. Got it in there. Marvin 23 for the senior. His final act at Patterson. Inside, that one gets in. Jason Hardy. Timeout. Timeout. By the Indians. 58-45 lead for them. And Patterson. Trying to get that 2 8 hey, time hey, back hey, up the game. Patterson, 6.58 and counting left. Up by 13. Trying to become the 2 8 chance for the second time in three years. And third overall in the MPSSAA. That's a three. Spins it in. It's Blackwell. Three. Blackwell. Blackwell with four fouls in the game. Now he has six points. Inside the reversal goes. Layup no good. Swings it up. Blackwell lays it in for two. Eight points for the junior guard. Back here to game action. Swings it. Well, shot clock at four. Wells gets the lane open and lays it in. Ten for him and it's four clippers and double figures now on points. 69-52. Pull up jump in the middle. That goes. Jason Haney again. He has 34 now. 
excuse me, he has 14 now. His jersey number's pretty for you. Didn't have quite an explosion like that. And Mongos grabs the rebound. Price all alone! Slams it down! And a 2A championship to follow with 234 left. Mongo. This is feisty style. Price with a rebound. Price! Estimation layup! 73-54 lead to 19. Raise it in timeout. Patterson, two minutes left. Got him in the bag now. Trying to tie it up for good. Swings it, Wilts. Gonna dribble it out, gonna hold. Shot clock at 10. Will skates, layup! And I think that did tie it up. 138 left. That's a three, no good. Bat it back, blocked from behind by Thomas. 91 seconds left to a second 2A championship in three years for Patterson. Kick City, Mongo, Thomas, Price, one more time, and he lays it in. Thomas, Price, finishes the passing career off right. 51.8 left. Price, Mongo, and company. Then set off the right way. That didn't do it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Patterson, the Clippers, bring the 2A title back to Kane Street for the second time in three seasons. That's your final 79 of 56. A wonderful season for Patterson, which will end with a record of 25 and 3. Carmen goes from Jock 24 and 4. Had a wonderful season down in the Eastern Shore. With the Patterson Clippers. A year ago, injuries derailed their season. But this year, health, the return of Marvin Price. And maturity. All helping Patterson win the 2A title. We'll be back with post game ceremony and press conference coming your way.
Keyshawn Marshall. Five wins for Patterson this year. 
Dominated in city play, won in a city championship. And Coach Martin started back in 2011. And now the program up and rolling and is really a major power in the area. Patterson wins the 2A for a second time in three years. Third MPSSA title overall. We got one more final to bring to you here on the Dice Running Network. It's brought neck. Eleanor Roosevelt. That's coming at you up next. Here on DSN. Stay tuned for that one. And we have the post game of this 2A final right here coming up. Again, just in general, um, you know, Coach Wilder, just like uh, Coach Lambert, uh, you know, tremendous. I mean, what, 53 years down there, uh, over 800 and some wins. These guys gave us a battle uh, throughout. Um, you know, the game plan it didn't work the way I thought it would work. I thought we'd be able to open it up earlier. Got into some foul trouble early on. Uh, Zach with the, the second foul and the technical foul, gave him his third. Um, I think it was like 18 18. And then Price hit a, you know, went off for three or four big shots in a row, kind of gave us the cushion. Uh, he had 24 points in the first half, nothing in the third quarter, and then uh, 10 in the fourth quarter. So finished with 31, uh, double double, uh, which is great because two years ago I was getting on him about the century, century game. He had 12 <coughs> points, one rebound. And it's just, it just was a subpar performance. Uh, and we just needed more from him. But we had four guys in double digits tonight. So, I mean, it gives us the balance that we had all year, uh, three, four guys in double digits. Uh, but it kept the same way. I mean, it's never going to be pretty. We're not a, we, we don't win pretty. Uh, and there's only two columns. you got a W column and a loss column. So we'll, we'll take it. Uh, but hats off to Coach Waller. Uh, their guys just uh, played a great game. But over the year, you, you guys that follow us, uh, usually third, fourth quarter, we wear them down a little bit, and that's what we did tonight again. Talk about TJ's contribution in the second half. Well, it, it was big. Uh, that big three-pointer uh, that bumped, uh, bumped it up, I think, to 12 to 15. Uh, just getting in the lane, our guards are some of the best guards in the state. So again, the same way, they're going to have to come out and play man-to-man. -man. We can spread the court uh, with TJ and Mungo up top and really force them to guard man-to-man. -man. Uh, but, I mean, that's what you would expect. These guys, the seniors, have played a ton of games. I love guys that have experience that have played 70, 80, 90 games because they've seen a lot of things. Um, so, you know, we're, we're very excited uh, for this. Very excited for our school community. Our alumni is very proud of our team. Our principals, uh, Mr. Ben, Mr. Luku, uh, Ms. Sadler was here, Mr. Lassier, our athletic director. Uh, I mean, the school takes a lot of pride in it. Uh, there's a lot of negativity around a lot of stuff in Baltimore City, but uh, today we're the third team to, to walk away with a state title. Uh, so we're very proud of our guys. Coach, Coach Martin, the season, I know it was much good, but you had a couple of stuff going on behind the scenes. But mainly, how does this championship mean to you compared to the other two in the past? Well, I'm like, that's asking me about comparing my kids or something. <laughs> uh, you know, both, all three of them are special. I mean, I don't take any of them for granted. You know, there's not a single day that I text Marvin about leaving me before I could have a fourth, <laughs> have a fourth title, Marvin. Uh, <laughs> but in terms of general, it was, you know, I mean, it, it was, this was similar to uh, the 2012 one in terms of the expectations early on. I mean, a lot of expectations to start of the season and say, hey, you're the clear front runner in the 2A. Now go finish the season as the, 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 the winner of the 2A. We had a couple of hiccups uh, along the way in terms of the Sidwell Friends game. Uh, we didn't have Jay Willis for the game uh, down on Eastern Shore. Uh, we lost to uh, uh, Morgan Park uh, in overtime. You know, I mean, they 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 played in this uh, Chicago City Championship game. <coughs> They're ranked in the top 50 nationally, so that wasn't a bad loss. I didn't think Sidwell Friends beat Wilson in the DC Championship. That's true. Uh, so that's that's not a bad loss either. And then we lost to uh, uh, Bonner 
from Philly in double overtime with Isaiah Wong that's going to Miami. So locally we've gone 25 and 0. Uh, you know, to max out, it would have been great to have that perfect season as a coach. It would have been great to have the 28 and 0. We talked about that before the season started. But in order for to do that, you know, you know, a lot of things have to go the right way. Uh, we were acclimating Jay Willis into our system. Uh, Marvin was uh, getting over his injury. Um, you know, slowly but surely he became Marvin Price, and you guys saw that throughout the year. We got better as the year went on. Uh, and then trying to build some depth. You know, Joe Jones, I thought uh, number 12 gave us uh, a lot of good play. That missed the game. He had four points, ten rebounds. Last night, eight points, five rebounds. So building that depth, you know, that helped us out. Uh, but like I told the guys, um, you know, the journey, I enjoy the journey. I enjoy the daily practices. I enjoy watching game film. Um, you know, I was uh, love playing chess. So I, I enjoy the counteraction in terms of this is what we're going to do. If they do this, they do this, they do this. You know, what's our next move? I'm trying to visualize it out. And then it's their job to go out and do it. So, I mean, we put the game plan in place. But then, I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful to have, you know, I mean, the guys that we have. Uh, there's not another team in the state that, that, you know, that I would take. You look at Lake Clifton one, we beat them by 26. Polly, which everyone in here thought that would beat us, we beat them, right? I mean, everybody knew the Polly's going to I mean, what, what was the chance going into the fourth quarter down 15? Uh, but they, we kept coming and coming and coming and coming, and eventually we would push through. And that, that was kind of the attitude all year that we're going to keep coming until we got the W. Hey, real quick, talk about the thought process. Marvin has two fouls. Was there a thought just maybe let him sit halfway through the second quarter or the whole because he was in there pretty early. Which worked out well because he had, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I, I draw on my experience with uh, Akil, actually, the, um, the Thomas Stone game in 2012. It was a decision to make. He, had, he picked up four fouls, actually, early in the fourth quarter. And I had a, my, my, my reaction was to sit him, but then I ended up, the, ended up playing him uh, and telling Marvin the same way. We, we, what we changed up was on the 2 3, we put him in the middle a lot. You know, if you're on the wing and you, you're going down and you got to slide your foot, <coughs> there's more chances than a foul. So you hide them a little bit in the two, three. Uh, and then at the end of the quarters, you try to get the guys out that have foul trouble. So we were constantly aware of who's got two, three fouls, whatever quarter. Uh, not having Zach the whole game. Uh, I mean, it was a very strange call. The second foul, I thought the kid tripped. And then he, he gave a tech on 34. And then his reason to me was that he stood over, he stood over the player. So I thought it was a, it was a cop out in terms of I got to give a double tech. But I saddled him with the third. So I just, I just think it took Zach totally out of his out of rhythm tonight. Marvin, when, when you go through a stretch like you went through, what, what is that like? Um, just like just to keep playing, not like overthink stuff or force anything. For one of the players, how important was it to get people in ball movement against their zone defense? When you did that, you guys pretty much saw. It happens a lot because uh, Marvin was hot and Jay was getting into our rep, his rhythm and uh, me and Michael was. So, and Coach Marvin was telling us at halftime how I played was going to work because that 3-2 uh, was up a little bit. I mean, 2-3 was up a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, TJ, just talk about the second half you had, uh, what, you know, the foul trouble that you guys had for you to step up and really get some big points. Uh, I, I wasn't uh, doing that much in the first half and I was getting down on myself. But, Willis picked me up and he told me just keep playing. So I just kept shooting my shot and then dropping that second. So I just continued. And it was like, uh, it Talk about yeah. any other players other than Jalen. Uh, talk about Jalen and what he brought to this team this year because it seems like every time there's a loose ball, a rebound, or something, Jalen Willis is somehow in the middle of it. Uh, he just brings like uh, test me. Like he always, the guy that like, Bring us together and make us go that extra, like extra length. Um, you, you just like, you just like an animal over the court. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, it's like great playing with a guy, a guy like uh, Jay Willis, because he's like, you all over the place. Every time you see him with that. Draw. And he basically said it all. It's like, it's, it's, I played with him all my life, so mm -hmm. I'm going to play. I see him here. Like, I'm going to be like, too, so he's just kind of in. And Jalen, just talk about just what you provided to this team this year. Well, we just we needed a, like a spark person, or 
person that just burns all energy. And I wanted to be that person. So I just bring all the energy and I once I once everybody wants to win, then we feel fine. Does playing on the EYBL help you in that role this year? Yeah, the EYBL it helped me because I seen somebody that's better than me. So it makes me want to work harder and want to push myself. So I figured out that there's more ways to the game than scoring the basketball. So if I if I don't score the basketball, I can get people involved and just rebound. And if I rebound and keep my team together, then we'll be fine. Can you guys talk about the competition in Baltimore City? Um, you won three, three out of three so far today, state championship. <laughs> Um, what did I say about your city, your competition, and how you guys kind of got through it? Well, I mean, it is a grind every night with uh, Polly. Um, it was really shot up, you know what I mean, in terms of talent-wise, uh, to get a strong goal. And that's what I was telling my coaching staff early in the year. We've been uh, looking at Edmonds and the Lake and everything else, and kind of Polly's just sitting there. And I say, Polly's really our number one enemy at this point, <laughs> you know, flat out. Uh, you know, we got to go get them. Uh, that's that's what we're shooting for um, because they got they got a great setup over there where they can offer a private school education for free. He's got the connection with Mello, um, Edmondson and stuff, dancer and stuff. You're talking about coaches, uh, Tree, Sam. You're talking about a lot of guys. Well, and Tree's got five state titles now. Sam just picked up number three today. Um, so you're talking a lot of experience, a lot of great players. Uh, then you're looking at the daily grind of like a Dunbar, a City, a Ben Franklin. So every night you, we have to bring it, and there's different environments in the city that you have to play in to prepare you. There's no easy. I mean, our guys, like I told them, talent is is nothing. I mean, every night we got to bring the energy. Our 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 team is built around our energy and passion to play, and that's what most of the uh, games we gave this year. And I knew we'd make a run every game this year. Marvin, how does this one feel? And does like coming back from the injury make you like appreciate the journey like that much more? I feel like I appreciate this one more just because, I mean, like, I had to work to even like, be in a position to play, play like forward again, like with therapy and all that. And it just, it just means more. Not only that, but like try to get back to the level that you once were, right? Yeah, that also makes it like more because at the beginning of the season, I mean, it was hard. Like I wasn't. Like it's confident, it's comfortable, it wasn't moving as well. So Did you think you would have this maybe kind of performance, thirty one points, ten rebounds back in maybe December in the state title game? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but did it just like constant work in the gym? Yeah, know? like just confidence in my teammates and coaches pushing me. Just yeah. and every day just more and more. Was there like a specific moment, you know, like what Kyle was asking, where you just thought, oh man, I'm back, like, the knee's good, you know, confidence uh, is back? Nah, I don't know. Just like a general? <laughs> yeah, just up. like slowly but surely. Coach, how much did you know about your opponent coming in, and how do you look at a state tournament like this, knowing that you're facing <coughs> the best of the best the state has to offer every single night uh, in the city? Uh, I mean, last week at the Winter Regional uh, Championship, you look at your first opponent. So our first opponent was Thomas Stone on Friday night. Um, so I'll, I'll start emailing or texting or calling some of my friends around the state, asking for tape, uh, a bunch of coaches. So I'll, I'll get tape, three, four tapes on these things. So Thomas Stone, uh, you know, I spent maybe three or four days on. Because uh, if you don't win that first game, you don't get the second game. And then I spent a little bit of time. We had played Oakdale, which was an advantage. Uh, spent a little bit of time in Oakdale and Wacomico, uh Wednesday and Thursday. And then after I knew that Wacomico won last night, I spent uh, probably until about 2 o'clock in the morning last night going back through my stuff on Wacomico, And then this morning going through my notes on Wacomico, And then we had a shoot around from 1 to 3 today. Go through the game plan, go through every single player, go through what they run, what they like to do, what we can do to attack it, and then see if our guys can go out and execute it. Any of you guys? Last question. Yeah. Just talk a little bit about the high expectations going into the year, winning the Baltimore City Championship game, getting through here, winning this. What What is the feeling like now with all that anticipation and it's come to fruition and you guys are, are state champions, Baltimore City champions again? Uh, it's like 
it's a relief because I mean, even though we won the city championship, it's like if you don't win the state championship, the season is a waste. And our coaches always say that, so it's just like, it's just, I mean, a good way to end it. I mean, our, our five goals are what? What are our five goals over here? City, city regional, state. Get kids in college. And what else? And 10 GPA. All right, that's our five goals here. 3.0, all seniors go to college, city championship, regional championship, state title. This year, we're really looking at it, though. Because uh, I didn't know until the last couple of years I've been looking, they give out a Jack uh, Willard Sportsmanship Award, which was kind of odd that the city that we haven't joined, I think we joined the state back in 93. Um, and the you know, city team's been down there a lot. In 26 years, only Evanston has won that Sportsmanship Award. So I was hoping, I don't, I don't know how the vote goes, but I'm hoping we win it this year because I think our fans and our, our, our kids uh, show a lot of sportsmanship. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. This is Die Sporting Network. What, what?